Yeah, let's get right to the hot inflation numbers. 5.4% on the top line and 4.5% on the uh, core numbers. How do you react to this? Do you feel more or less secure now that but your outlook that inflation is temporary? Sure. Though this has really been expected. We expected a pop in inflation like this, and it will come, it will be for the next couple of months. And the reason is uh, there are a variety of reasons. We've all cited them. We had low uh, prices during the depth of the pandemic. Prices are recovering in airlines and other travel services. Once those have done, we don't expect those to keep growing. We also have bottlenecks. Demand came back faster than supply, and there are these temporary bottlenecks. So right now, it's really remain steady in the boat. Don't read too much signal out of any month of data. And let's get through this volatile period so we can really see where the economy is. Mary, when, uh, when you look at the data here, anything specifically that really helps support your view here? When you look at, for example, used car prices up 10 percent. Uh, third month in a row of really strong gains, food prices up very strongly. Uh, do you see more temporary in this or do you start to have some concerns that maybe there's a more permanent nature to this? No, I really do see this as temporary. The used car being a great example. The used car prices are simply a reflection of the of the temporary bottlenecks we see in the new car uh, supply because of the semiconductor chips that need to be put into the cars. And also people are going back to work and they need to get cars. And there are lots of reasons why we didn't have a good supply of used cars because of the pandemic. So all of these things work themselves out. And I think the main thing to recognize is Several months of this doesn't mean that it's not transitory. Transitory is really about what factors are driving it and do we expect it to continue to grow going forward? And I just don't see that happening in the used car market or the airline prices or travel and tourism more generally, all of which are really driving up uh, the inflation numbers. But the real determinant of whether or not it's tr transitory is whether or not it embeds itself in the psychology of consumers. We just had the New York Fed report that uh, inflation expectations hit a record of 4.8% in the next year. Do you start to get concerned that there is an embedding of inflationary expectations in the part of American consumers? So that's a terrific point, and absolutely we focus on inflation expectations, but here it's really important to separate out near-term inflation expectations from longer-run inflation expectations. And when you look at the consumers or the businesses, the survey of professional forecasters, you see this pop in short-run inflation expectations. They're very reactive to the data. Once the prices stabilize and we don't have those high readings on inflation, they historically just come right back down. Importantly, long-run inflation expectations haven't made that move at all. They're really very steady. So that's what I'm looking at is how are consumers, businesses smoothing through what they see today and thinking about what's going to happen five years from now. And there you just don't see a lot of movement in this long run inflation expectations, which, as you uh, referenced, is what we really depend on to maintain inflation expectations at our 2 percent target more generally. President Daly, when you last joined us, you said that policy was in a good place. Do you still feel that way? And does that mean that you're thinking about a tapering, for example, announcement in the fall and reducing those asset purchases sometime this year and next year? Could you give us an idea of your timeline? Sure, Steve, of course. So I do think policy is in a great place right now. And the reason I think it's in a good place is because it's ready to respond to whatever the economy brings us, right? We have accommodation in the system that is supporting the recovery of the economy. I'm very bullish about the fall. You know, I know there are risks out there with the, the new Delta variant, et cetera, but I'm really confident that we are going to have a strong fall, like we've had the momentum already expressing itself. With that, it is appropriate to start talking about taking tapering, tapering uh, asset purchases, taking some of the accommodation that we've provided to the economy down. We'll still be in a very accommodative position with a low funds rate, but we don't need all the tools as we see the economy get its own footing. So absolutely time to start doing that, having those conversations. My own view is we'll probably be in a good position to taper at the end of this year or early next. And what about raising interest rates? The market after the last meeting, uh, and the co press conference by Chairman Powell uh, pulled forward the time of the first rate hike into, I guess, the fall of October, uh, fall of 2022. Is that where your thinking is, or do you think it might be longer than that? 
Well, I think it's really premature to talk about rate increases. Right now, we want to do the following. We need to get through the fall, right? The, the Delta variant uh, being so um, contagious and spreading throughout the globe and, and actually spreading in the U.S., that's a risk. We also have you know, just we need to open the economy fully and have kids will go back to school, see how many people we can bring back off the sidelines into the labor market, see how close we can get to our full employment mandate before we start talking about rate increases. So right now I'm focused completely on the uh, timing, pace, and composition of asset purchases, and we'll do those first, and then we'll think about, okay, what's the next step? And that next step could, will definitely depend on the economy, and most importantly, on where COVID goes, which right now looks to be we're getting through it, but again, we're not through it yet.